Hey folks, it's Eric Capuano. Um, wanted to add a uh, an additional piece to our our blog series titled "So You Want to Be a Sock Analyst," uh, because while we've gotten some really good experience with some of the basic things like you know generating telemetry, crafting detection rules to look for suspicious or you know unusual things happening, uh, we've even gone so far as to writing automated response actions. Right? Well, another kind of crucial skill set that you absolutely need to you know hone as a SOC analyst is the ability to work with uh, false positives because as anyone that's been doing this kind of job for any amount of time would tell you false positives are kind of the bane of the SOC analyst experience right because you have all these various different detections that have been written maybe they're detections someone else wrote right and you know not all detections are going to be out of the box well tuned for a specific environment right um, and so what I've done here is I've actually crafted a rule uh, intentionally to generate a bunch of false positives. And I'll kind of show you what that rule looks like. So I've got a rule here called suspicious SPC host execution. But if you look at the contents of this rule, this is not a very well written rule out of the box because all it's simply looking for are new processes um, for SPC host.exe. Um, and then it's going to kick out that detection for, hey, uh, we've got a suspicious SVC host execution. Now, the reason this is not a good rule is because SVC host is a very normal and expected process. It runs you know, many times on a healthy window system, which is why if we come over here and look at our detections, we've got a number of these detections. And I would tell you probably it, all of these would be false positives because um, you know, there is no suspicious SVC host stuff happening on this particular box. So I know this is a clean system, uh, at least from an SVC host perspective. Um, so this is a good opportunity to kind of step through how would we tune this rule to generate fewer and ideally no false positives. So with this particular example, you know, there, there's obviously you know, two different ways that I could approach this. First being, I should probably just make this rule better, right? The actual detection rule itself, make it a little bit more specific, not just looking for any SVC host execution. Uh, maybe what I'd be looking for are SVC host executions in paths other than system 32, which is generally where we expect to see SVC host run from, right? Uh, so there's other things that I could do to just improve this detection rule but I want to just leave the rule the way that it is and show you how we would instead craft a false positive rule that basically runs in conjunction with the detection rule in order to suppress events that meet certain criteria. All right, so let's talk about the criteria that I might consider for a false positive uh, for this detection rule. So. Notice this SVC host executable here that has that has been detected as suspicious. That path is the normal and expected path of SVC host. So that's not weird. You know, that's generally ex expected. Now, the other thing that I would pay attention to is the command line arguments being used here for this SVC host execution. That's another opportunity to kind of identify, mm, is this unusual SVC host uh, activity or is this actually very common and very kind of uh, false positive uh, uh, type of activity. So looking specifically at the command line arguments, I'm seeing what are some of the most expected and, and normal command line arguments for an SVC host execution. That dash K there specifying the, uh, basically the service group that this service is being executed within. Um, dash P has to do with shared, uh, shared process um, uh, kind of behavior that a lot of SVC host executions leverage. And then dash S is where we specify the name of the service. Now you will sometimes see one, two, or all three of these, uh, you know, these dash command line arguments, but I'll tell you the one you will almost always see is the dash K, right? So knowing a little bit about what SVC host normally looks like, I can better craft a false positive rule that's going to account for these things and not generate alerts for seemingly benign SVC host execution. So let's go through the process. Let's craft a false positive rule. Now this is an actually a very easy thing to do when you already have a detection like we do here, 
that has this false positive kind of activity within it because all I need to do is simply click on mark false positive. And what that's done is that's brought me into the dialogue for crafting a new false positive rule. Now let me kind of break this down and explain sort of the components here. So it has carried forward several of the sort of, you know, uh, paths inside that original detection event, um, assuming that you want to exclude situations like that. Right now, let's talk about each one of these though, because some of these are going to be more useful than others. So this first entry you see here, very useful. What this is saying is the detection rule category is suspicion, suspicious SPC host execution. Now that's just basically the name of that DNR rule. The DNR rule that I wrote that isn't so great, that's the name of it. So it's saying this false positive rule will only be applied on detections coming from that original detection rule. Now, the next thing that we see in here is it has brought forward the full path of that SVC host process that we saw in our false positive. And that's great because that is exactly what I want to exclude. I don't really care if that path is the correct path for SVC host. I'd be much more interested if it was SPC host running from C Windows Temp or something like that. Certainly want to get a detection on that, but not as not as worried about one where it's the correct location. Now I also like this next thing that it brought forward. It carried forward the command line arguments that we saw in our false positive. Now I'm going to make a tweak to this though because here's the thing: this exact set of command line arguments. Well, there are things here that are going to change, like this service group name or this service name here, right? Now, remember what I said about the SVC host command line arguments. One of the most predictable things that I will almost always expect to see is at least that dash K. So what I might do to make this rule just a little bit more resilient is simply say, if the command line contains a dash K parameter, it's probably not the thing I want to alert on. Now, let me just throw out a quick caveat. Could an adversary abuse this, you know, knowledge and create some sort of suspicious mechanism that's going to use dash K? Of course, right? But I'm giving you kind of the 80% of the approach here that you want to start to kind of, you know, focus in on and hone. Um, but as we get more and more sophisticated in our you know, detection rule authoring as in our false positive tuning, you want to account for some of those really rare and, and more specific edge cases. But I think this is a good enough demonstration of the capability. Now, these next two things that it brought forward, I'm not as crazy about. I'll tell you why. So what this is saying is the hash, which by the way, is the hash of the process, the SBC host executable. It's saying maybe we don't care as long as that is the correct hash. Okay, I don't, I don't hate that. that. That makes some good sense. But the reason that I wouldn't rely heavily on that is because that hash can change, right? As you know, OS updates come out, it's possible that SPC host gets updated itself and therefore that hash changes. So I'm not really looking to leverage something like that um, for a long-term uh, solution. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And the next thing here is saying only apply this false positive rule if the host name is this host name here. Um, all right, well, I want, I want this false positive rule to be applied to all detections on all hosts. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. So now we have a pretty solid false positive rule set up that's gonna assess any detections that fire for the suspicious SVC host execution, checking to see is SVC host in the proper path that it should be, and do we see that expected dash K command line argument? And if so, don't generate an alert, right? It's going to basically kill that detection before it hits your detections screen. Um, so there you have it. We've kind of tuned this to be a little bit less false positive prone. Now let me show you something really cool that it might not be as immediately obvious. Right here in the context of crafting this false positive rule, if I click here on target detection, um, what I can do is I can go and get sort of the, uh, the raw event that I want to kind of test this, up, test this against. So what I might do is come back to my detections, grab one of those 
false positives that I don't really want to, uh, to have generated anymore. And we're going to grab the raw event and bring it into that test sort of uh, box. So I'll just grab the first one I see here because, yep, that looks like the kind of stuff that I don't really want to see. Um, these are not the actionable alerts that, uh, that you want just flooding your, uh, your, your, your console here. So I'm going to copy out this raw event, bring it back, paste it into this target right here. And now what I can do is I can test this false positive logic against that rule. And it's going to tell me, would this have squashed this particular detection? So we'll click right here, test detection. And notice we've got a match, meaning this rule did match that event. And you can get a little bit more granularity about what it matched on. It's saying, hey, yes, we matched on it being a detection for a suspicious SVC host. We also matched on that full file path containing uh, C Windows System 32 SVC host, and we matched on dash K being in the command line argument, right? So that's exactly what we wanted it to, to pick up on, right? That full path to the SVC host and the presence of dash K in the command line argument. Therefore, this detection here would not have been generated um, if the false positive rule had existed already. So all I need to do now to put this thing into effect is save it. I'll go ahead and leave that default name there. That's fine. And now I will no longer get detections for this suspicious SVC host execution where those particular uh, values are true, right? So obviously you'd want to spend some more time with this. Um, you know, there's a lot of different situations and scenarios where you're going to want to build and tune false positive rules. And this is also where a bit of subjective knowledge comes into play about what normal looks like, right? You know, because it may not have been immediately obvious to you that, uh, you know, SVC host is generally, you know, run this way and from these locations and with these command line arguments. So that's where time and experience will really sort of assist you in making these types of determinations. But keep in mind, there's a lot of great resources out there on the internet. I'll drop a few links that I think would be helpful for you in the uh, blog article here um, to kind of help you kind of get closer to the, uh, to the source of truth of what these normal system processes should look like, right? Otherwise, I uh, hope this was a good sort of primer into helping you, you know, develop false positive rules, spend some time with it, practice this in your own, and have a great time. Uh, see you all again soon.